After you have completed the family chart, the pedigree chart, as far as you can at this point, it is time to go ahead and to start research. One of the first things you'll want to do is you'll want to collect your vital records. There are, you have the primary and you have the secondary records. Just the same as you went to primary school and then secondary being high school. The primary is what is, was done at that time the birth certificate, the death certificate, the marriage license, and possibly the family Bible. Uh, the secondary are the family uh, records, the things that are done at a later date. So the primary, needless to say, is the most important. Start collecting them. You may have a copy. Hopefully you have a copy of your birth certificate, your marriage license. Find them. Copy them and put them into your notebook. Start in your loose leaf notebook with the archival inserts so that you're inserting those. Then the next step is I recommend that you go to the library. Get acquainted with your librarians. Here in Stanley County, it's Paul Morrison is the director. He's very helpful in helping you find your family. Some of the things that you can find here in the library is the Heritage Quest. This can be uh, accessed from your home if you have a library card. With the Heritage Quest, you can get the censuses and also the pensions. The library has Ancestry.com, which you can use free of charge at the library. If you do it in your own home, you have to have a subscription, a paid subscription. Another one would be the newspapers.com. This is here in the library for North Carolina only. So if you are looking for an obituary in a North Carolina uh, newspaper, you can find that on the newspaper.com. Another thing that you can do is the find a grave. Uh, and you can do this at home. The find a grave in many cases shows pictures of the tombstones and the tombstone usually is a primary source. Uh, be careful about find a grave. Many times people have done what I call, they've editorialized. They've added material about who the father is, who the mother is, other information. If this is not on the tombstone, this is not a primary source. It is a clue, and you want to keep track of all these clues because that will lead you to the next step. All right, you've gotten to grandfather, grandmother, and... First off, I will say that with your pedigree chart, if you look at it, you remember that you have two parents, four grandparents, eight great-grandparents, 16, and just keeps doubling. So you can see that in a short period of time, you can have 64, 128 ancestors. It just keeps doubling. And no doubt you'll want to collect as much as you can. How do I find who the parent is? And that can be a challenge at times. If you get a death certificate, and if, if it is filled out correctly, it will give you the name of the parents. Uh, death certificate and birth certificates in North Carolina were started in only 1913-1914. And many of those first ones were not recorded. It was up to, uh, if the person died at home, it might have been up to the doctor to record that. So some of the first ones, unfortunately, are not there. Marriages were earlier. And we have the Stanley County marriage book. And we know that Stanley County was created in 18. 41. However, the first marriages were not kept. So there's two parts in this book. The part A is from 
1851 to 1867. Unfortunately, there were no records kept before that time. The first part does not include parents. The second part, and this book is from 1867 to 1904, this does include parents. It gives the name of the, the man, many times how old he was when he married, the name of the bride, how old she was, the name of the parents, and sometimes it will say that they were deceased. So when you see the date, you know that that parent was deceased prior to the date of, the parent, of, of that marriage. This is an excellent way of finding a parent, finding how to do that. At one point, then you'll want to go to the censuses. And you remember that the censuses are taken every 10 years. They started out in 1790, taken every 10 years. Unfortunately, the first censuses only listed the name of the head of the household. From 1790 until through 1840, it would list that there were two males under such and such an age, so many females under such and such an age, so that you could tell approximately the size of the family. 1850 was the first censuses that listed the head of the household, the spouse, and the name of each child. As the censuses progressed, some of them gave different information. The 1880 showed where the parents were born. So maybe you had, we'll say the Louder family. You're looking at one here. The parent was born in Pennsylvania. So you know to then at that point that you're going to Pennsylvania to find those records. Uh, there also were obituary, mortal, excuse me, mortality records. The year that the record was, the census was taken. So you had a mortality schedule for 1850, 60, 70, and 80. And this would tell what month that individual died, and in some cases, what the, the, the cause of the death. So um, this is very helpful. Sometimes the period from 1800 to 1840 is the most difficult time to find the link from one generation to the other. And in that case, then you hope and pray that that individual had a will. If they had a will, they died testate. That was the, and they had an executor. If they did not have a will, they died intestate and there was an administrator. These records are usually in the, uh, the court records and we have here in our library a wonderful book. This is the North Carolina Wills by Thornton Mitchell and I have not found an error in this. If this person had a will, it will be listed in here and then you will know what state to go to and age and, and the date. Uh, if, he, if it's not in there, you can be pretty sure that there is no will. The, sometimes, the, if there is no will, then with the estate, they had to list all children. With a will, not all children had to be listed. And so many times it, it would say, I leave to all my children and without a name. And then you're very frustrated and you think, oh, well, why didn't they tell me who those children are? The other thing is maybe they've already given land probably to the oldest son. And so he may not be listed in that will. And, and so then you would have to find something else to find his, that, his link. Uh, Deeds. Do not overlook the value of deeds. You might find one where there's a gift of a father to a son, and usually the land stayed in the son's line. The girls received material things. Uh, it could be anything from 
mother's clothes to the bed linens to different things. But as I say, the land was usually given to the boy because it's assumed that maybe the girl will marry and her dad has, and her husband will have the land. So look at it that way. Um, then another thing about, it's the division of land. And if you find a situation where it says heirs of um, John Smith deceased, and lists all those children, you can assume that those are brothers and sisters and the child, children, of the person deceased. And, and this can be very, very, very helpful. It, may, it could have up to 50 people's names in that. I think about one with the almonds, in which the land was not settled until later, and it listed quite a number of generations. In North Carolina, as long as the land is passed from one child, from dad to child, within the family, you do not have to have a new deed. So maybe it goes to several generations before the deed was created. You would only have a deed if, when you got ready to sell. And, and of course, that, that can be very frustrating because you're like, okay, so... Where's the deed? And as I say, there may not be a deed because it's been passed from one to the other. Hopefully you'll find in the will where it's passed, but it doesn't always have to be in that will. 